Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and I'm playing with the Dinosaur True King deck again. Like I said, if you watched the previous video that I put up earlier today, I'm doing multiple videos for this day, and I'm doing multiple matches, because the last match was really lackluster in terms of I just got stomped by this Blue Eyes deck, the Blue Eyes Invoke deck that Earthworm again was playing, so I decided to play with him again for another video. And so, this one is a little bit more interesting in terms of the creativity of a deck that he's playing. He's playing some very creative decks. And uh, so this one is actually Windwitch Magispector, but at this point in the match, I do not know that it is a Windwitch Magispector deck. I'm just expecting it to be like Windwitch Invoked Artifact, and I'm just preparing myself to like really not have a good time <laughs> as far as that goes. But looking at my opening hand, my opening hand is a bunch of True King cards, which is not terrible, uh, but it's also got the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno in there. But I end up drawing into uh, Pitry Dragon with the uh, Dragonic Diagram, as well as the uh, True Kings being in my hand. So that's ultimately something that I was really like pleased about in terms of how uh, and how it went. So I was like, since I drew this little dinosaur, I was like, I can use my big uh, True Kings in order to bait the Crystal Wing Negation, but instead I get Max Seed, which I'm not actually too like worried by, because at this point I'm able to successfully summon my Fire True King and then structure my Chain Links to where the Earth True King is on Chain Link 1 and the Fire one that got destroyed is Chain Link 2, meaning that there's no way that he can stop me from summoning the second Fire True King to my field, and then allowing me to go for VFD, and then using my Dragonic Diagram. So, I use this to attack over the Crystal Wing, uh, doing 300, and then I could have used Dragonic Diagram here to destroy the, uh, the Petri Dragon out of my hand, to, you know, float into a Dino, but ultimately I decided that it wasn't really that much of a problem or, like, a need to do so, because of the fact that I have VFD, which I use on his standby phase to call Wind, and then I also have the Earth True King that I recurred to my hand for free, which I could then use to pop the little dinosaur, as well as Ultimate Conductor Tyranno out of my hand, and that allows me to go straight into uh, Soul Absorbing or Soul Devouring Oviraptor to allow me to do things there. But So, the VFD called Wind, and he just Arch Phoenix centric away my uh, Dragonic Diagram and just passed turn. So at this point, he's revealed a Pendulum Monster to me, and so I'm a little bit confused. And so I still have no idea at this point what I'm playing against, so I just decide to just keep going like in a normal fashion of what I think would be uh, okay. So I summon the Soul Devouring Oviraptor out of my deck, use its effect to search for a baby Cerasaurus, and then use the Oviraptor to target it and bring back the uh, Petri Dragon. Now from here, um, I start actually just doing like some really questionable plays, <laughs> uh, because I'm just... I'm just doing things in the natural flow of order of how I feel like they need to be. Uh, and so I've got VFD on the board, and so I just summoned the Miscellaneousaurus. I'm pretty sure I could have probably gone further uh, in my turn with uh, with a different option. But I just figured that, like, at this point, I'm already ahead of the game because of the fact that I've got VFD on my side of the board. I've got a floating True King, uh, and so I've got a floating Dinosaur. And so I just decided to make Lagia. I feel like I probably could have gone further. Um, or maybe I just couldn't. There might just be like no way I could have gone further than what I did, and making the Logia there was probably the best move. Um, or summoning the uh, the other uh, dinosaur in attack mode and being able to like attack with both of them and then make Logia just for more damage is arguably correct. But at this point, like he could have Mirror Force cards set that I don't know about, and Logia plays around those. But so I punch over his set monster, which ends up being a uh, another copy of Glass Bell, and then he activates Terraforming and reveals Majesty's Pegasus to me. I'm like, okay, here. Here is where we start getting into the uh, crux of like understanding what his deck is. So now I just immediately know it's like, oh, it's Wind Witch Magispector, which is an insanely cool concept in terms of uh, theory, because of the fact that your Wind Witches are Wind Spellcasters that you contribute for Majesty's Pegasus to summon your Magispector. And so I thought that was the coolest idea once it finally clicked in my head of what he was doing um, and what he was capable of doing with his deck, because. Any of your brick, uh, your brick wind witches can just be turned into like a bunbuku at that point, and so it's a really cool concept that I'm actually really interested in, and I might actually try out later for my own purposes, my own testing, because it sounds like it's a very good like potential idea. Being able to like go ice bell into like a crystal wing, and then be able to follow up with like a magic specter play into ties of the brethren just sounds like the absolute definition of an auto win. Uh, but so like you see here, he goes first and he just normal summons snowbell and then uses the Majesty's Pegasus to tribute it off and get access into his Magispector monsters. So he ends up going straight for a Fox and using Fox to add Tempest. So I know that he has access to Tempest, but the problem here is that his deck is inherently 
like not functioning too well as far as putting multiple threats out. And so because I've got the Megalo Smasher X in my hand, I'm able to normal summon it, and I'm able to just attack over that fox. Knowing that one of those sets is Tempest, the other one has to be something like a Mirror Force or a card that stops me from attacking over the fox, or else the fox is just going to go away, thus meaning the Tempest isn't live. But so I attack over the fox, and that's fine. And so then, main phase two, I use my uh, Earth True King, and I use it to pop the Baby Ceratosaurus and the Petri Dragon out of my deck, or the Petirodon, I think that's what its name is, actually, now that I think about it. Petri Dragon? No, definitely doesn't sound right. Uh, Pterodon? Sounds more correct, now that I think about it. But, so, I'm, I popped two Earths for my Earth True King, essentially. And so, both of those cards being floaters, I'm able to, you know, summon Soul Devouring Oviraptor, and then another card um, from my deck being uh, one of the, like, floaters, or whether it be, like, Miscellosaurus. But, the main thing is because I, because I destroyed two Earths with the uh, True King, I'm able to banish his fox plus two other cards from his extra deck that I just killed. Like, the fox just gets banished from his extra deck because it's a pendulum. Uh, but so I summon my Oviraptor and then I summon one of the floaters. And here is where I, uh, I start making some, uh, some mistakes. Because I just start going with the natural flow of order of like how I'm just deciding to make my turn. And so I float, I use Oviraptor to pop my uh, baby Sarasaurus and then summon a different one. And then I make Bahamut Shark. And I miscounted how many monsters were in my graveyard. I thought there were four, but I think there's three at this point. And so I was going to summon another level four. Yeah, there was three. So I was going to summon another level four dinosaur and overlay with the Oviraptor into Dolka and then detach off my Bahamut Shark to make Toad, right? So that's Toad plus Dolka. A neat interaction, right? And so now you can see here I'm kind of losing my collective fucking mind because I miscounted because it was just, it was just a problem that I had. I miscounted. Whoops. Um, I've already normal summoned, so I can't, like, do anything else, and so I just, at the end phase, my, uh, my Petirodon just dies, so I float into a, a Micellosaurus, or whatever its fucking name is, and so I've got this Bahamut Shark off the board <laughs> without a Totally Awesome, and I'm just crying, I'm just, uh, like, you can see at the bottom I typed, oh my god, I suck in the chat, because I literally just lost count of, like, my monster zones, and the cards in my graveyard, and so like if I had just one more in my graveyard, the play that I had was going to be amazing. And like I pre-counted the Bahamut Shark card being detached as a card in my graveyard, but I was like, wait, no, I'm not going to have enough zones on my board. And so I just did the the Grave Missosaurus effect first, and it's just eh, 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 it was a problem. But so luckily my opponent just normal summons Bambuku and tries to use this effect. And so I flip Dimensional Barrier, calling Pendulum so he doesn't get a search, and that also turns off his Majesty's Pegasus for the turn. And so, next turn, I just attack over the Bambuku because I know he still has a Tempest set. This is a fact that I have not forgotten, and should not have been forgotten. And so from here, I'm able to actually like start correcting my play lines because of the fact that, uh, that things can be changed. And so, I'm doing a little, bit of, a little bit more calculations, as you can see. My mouse is going a little bit crazy because I'm just trying to think of what I want to do. And so ultimately, I decide to go into Dolka, and then use the Bahamut Shark to summon Toad. Uh, and so, that just seems like the best option, because Toad is essentially the same exact card as Lagia, except with Bahamut Shark, you get to summon two Toads, instead of Lagia being a one-shot negation. Now, Lagia is more generic, because it does not require water monsters, um, it just requires your dinosaurs. So, uh, so Megalo Smasher X is literally the only way to make Bahamut Shark, but the entire deck cycles around floating dinosaurs, so it's pretty easy to get two Megalo Smasher X's on the board uh, to uh, to allow you to make Bahamut Shark. So when you're able to get to that, you're able to do it. But so from here, he normal summons a, uh, a Ogama, and I use Dolka to negate it. I'm expecting him to use Tempest to negate at some point during this uh, chain of events, because if he does, then I can just use my Toad to negate whatever like last scale that he puts down is preventing him from Pendulum Summoning. But so. I negate the uh, Toad's effect, it's still indestructible, so it stays around. He didn't Tempest my Dolka, so I'm just like, alright. But then he matched these Pegasus into a Bambuku, and for some reason I just decide not to negate this one with the Dolka. Um, I definitely should have, it was definitely the correct play to do so, but I just misclicked. I just clicked, no, let's not do that. Uh, but so, I use the Dolka, uh, I don't use the Dolka, which would have probably instantly baited the Tempest, and then I would have had the, you know, the Toad to negate something. But so from here, he just puts the Kieran in his scale and then activates Magic Spectre Gust, which is attempting to special summon the Kieran out of his scale. And so from here, I, I, I weigh my options and I'm like, yeah, I can deal with a lone Kieran. Uh, that's fine. Um, I'd rather get this Tempest out of the way earlier than as early as possible. So I use the Toad to negate 
um, the temp uh, to try to negate the gust, which gets tempested, which is what I wanted. And then the toad itself adds back the uh, the Megalo Smasher X from my graveyard, so that I have just more cards in hand to work with. Because at this point, he's summoning that Kieran, yes. But at this point, that Kieran can either bump heads with Dolka, can't run over Bahamut Shark, and can't run over the uh, Lithosasm. So like, it's just it's a it's a fantastic situation for me to be in. And so he decides to try and use his Kieran's effect to bounce. I just use Dolka to negate it so the stuff stays on the board. Now his only option is to crash with Dolka that's already gotten a good amount of value out of it. Um, and so I'm just able to do pretty much anything that I really want to do. I can use Bahamut Shark's effect to summon another totally awesome. And from here, I know that I have a, uh, a Micellosaurus engrave. Um, or I could at least discard the one that's in my hand. I've got access to one regardless. I can't remember if there's exactly if there's one engrave already. I believe there was off of the Dolka. Uh, but if, even if there isn't, I could just discard the one out of my hand because it doesn't require you to control any dinosaurs to discard um, from hand. You can discard it from your hand at any point. That's one of the neatest things about this card, making it a, a, a pseudo starter card. But so I do have one engrave, and so I've got enough dinosaurs engraved to use its effect and use its effect for four to summon Tyranno Infinity at 6k because there are already two banished dinosaurs. And so I'm deciding which ones to banish uh, alongside of it. And so I just banished two of the floaters that don't matter and then the vanilla. The, uh, the Megalo Smasher, and so uh, then I specialed the Tyranno Infinity out of my deck, and so from here there's literally no way that he doesn't just lose this turn. He tries to use Kieran to bounce the Tyranno Infinity, but I haven't normal summoned yet, so I just normal summon the Tyranno Infinity. <laughs> Seems pretty strong, right? Uh, Tyranno Infinity is one of my favorite cards for this deck because of how it meshes with the cards in general, uh, because of the fact that you are able to do stuff like that. You're able to summon it from your deck while also fueling its attack points. Uh, it's something that's really nice, uh, something that I find really, really cool and synergistic about the deck itself. But so, this is the deck on screen that you see that I played. Like I said in the previous video, if you have a dinosaur deck list that you think is uh, better than my own, or if you have any questions, or like uh, if you have any suggestions to make to it, or anything like that, you can make suggestions in the comments down below, and I'll definitely uh, look at them and maybe take them into consideration. But if you have a whole different deck um, that you think is a little bit better suited for uh, play when this uh, structure deck comes out, then uh, definitely be sure to send that to my email address that I'm accepting deck list set that is in the description of this video. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, concerns, and all that nonsense, I've, as I've already said. Definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the way to go, as well as it gets you into a monthly raffle giveaway for a high dollar card or sealed Konami product, whatever the flavor of the month is, essentially, as well as possible access to my personal Discord server to chat with me and play games with me for videos. That is where Earthworm came from in this video, and it's one of the reward tiers if you want to check that out. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting this channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and I'm a huge fan of how they do business their pricing and their shipping are both very good with what I've experienced but if you're looking to acquire cards I played in this video or uh, cards that my opponent played in this video then definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you but other than that that is it for this video again let me know what your thoughts are down below thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care I'll see you in the next video